Hello, this is Yvonne Duregne, Chair of the Ecosystem Workgroup of the Pacific Fishery Management Council. This presentation will brief you on the Ecosystem Workgroup's report for Agenda Item H2, the Fishery Ecosystem Plans, Ecosystem and Climate Information Initiative. You will find our report in the Council's March 2023 briefing book, which is available at the link at the bottom of your screen. This is the Council's fourth ecosystem initiative and is intended to follow these three basic steps. First, review the incorporation of ecosystem and climate information into the Council's harvest setting and fisheries management processes. Second, determine the need and appropriate timing for additional fisheries management plan specific ecosystem and climate information. And where there is a need for additional ecosystem and climate information, develop clear pathways for it to be used in the setting of scientific uncertainty and harvest policy. For this initiative, we want to look at how ecosystem information comes into the Council process, where it's used, and how to encourage the growing use of that information. Right now, and as described in the Fishery Ecosystem Plan, we have a process where the California Current Integrated Ecosystem Assessment Team brings us an annual ecosystem status report, and in developing that report, comes up with new and interesting ideas about the contents of future reports. And when the Council and its advisory bodies receive those reports, that process generates additional new ideas for future work. Those discussions also de generate side conversations about using information in the ecosystem status report and various other parts of the management process. For example, the Ecosystem Status Report contributors have been refining and updating the familiar stoplight tables that give salmon fishery managers a more clear picture of the state of the physical environment and its potential effects on the suites of salmon stocks in different sections of the coast. This initiative particularly asks us to look for ecosystem and climate information that may be useful for harvest setting and annual or biennial management processes. The Council has already recommended, supported, requested the use of ecosystem information in stock assessments where possible. Both the groundfish and coastal pelagic species stock assessment terms of reference ask that their stock assessment review processes look for opportunities to bring ecosystem information into those stock assessments. With those terms of reference in place, the Council has already taken what action it can to support inclusion of ecosystem and climate information into stock assessments. So, the Ecosystem Workgroup looked at the science and policy space that follows stock assessments, the Council's risk policy. One example of a Council advisory body using ecosystem status report information to try to address the Council's risk policy comes from this June 2022 report of the Coastal Pelagic Species Management Team, where the team noted the generally favorable ecosystem indicators for the central subpopulation of northern anchovy and recommended a catch limit based on the status of the stock and ecosystem information. While the Council didn't adopt the team's recommendation, the team was laying a path for the broader Council family to understand how ecosystem information could be used to understand risk in harvest setting. The North Pacific Fishery Management Council has used a more formal process, providing a general risk table that shows differing levels of concern over stock status under different categories of information, including environmental and ecosystem information. The 2020 Dorn and Zadar article that describes this process also provides a species-specific risk table that uses the information categories from the first table to evaluate risk in setting harvest levels for Gulf of Alaska pollock. For September 2023, the Ecosystem Workgroup is proposing that we provide the Council with a draft risk classification table tailored to our ecosystem and stock assessment process, and a pilot risk evaluation table for Petrali Sol. We chose Petrali Sol for a pilot species because it's an information-rich species. In other words, there is existing work that looks at the effects of climate conditions on the Petrali Sol stock. We don't think the Petrali Sol is in some new jeopardy or particularly vulnerable to climate change. Its boringness is part of what makes it a useful example. 
When the council gets to actually choosing species groups or species to be subject to the ecosystem and climate information reports, our plan for this initiative is that the council would evaluate its managed species groups and species using ecological criteria, economic criteria, and management criteria. We hope the council will move forward with seeking information on species or stock groups. So above the single species level, but below the fishery management plan level. For this March 2023 meeting, we hope to receive suggestions on these species group evaluation criteria found on pages six and seven of our report. And for September 2023, we would turn those suggestions into a draft table ultimately intended for the council to use for choosing future species groups to be evaluated in risk tables. So the goal here is not to choose all the different species groups that the council will address in order over the next 10 to 20 years, but instead to set up an ongoing process that the council can then use to recommend future species groups for its focus. For the council to use ecosystem information in harvest setting and in season annual or biennial management measures, we need to look at those processes for the most opportune times to make that information available. Section three of our report includes a snapshot of the timing of those processes in the four fishery management plans. But we provide details on those processes in Appendix A. For this March 2023 meeting, we would appreciate it if the species specific advisory bodies would review their appropriate sections of Appendix A and look for needed corrections. We're hoping that there, those sections are not too wildly off the mark. They have been reviewed by council staff experts on the four fishery management plans. The third step in the ecosystem initiative is to develop pathways for the council to use ecosystem and climate information in understanding scientific uncertainty in its harvest setting processes. Some of my colleagues like to talk about finding what they call management on-ramps for bringing ecosystem science into the management process. This initiative is about recognizing there may not be pre-existing on-ramps and that we may have to actually build them. To ensure that this initiative has clear end goals and products, we are recommending that the council consider this initiative complete when it has adopted and implemented an ongoing process for choosing new species to be subject to ecosystem and climate information reports and ensure that advisory bodies have future opportunities and processes for conferring with ecosystem scientists on the potential contents of those reports. While the start of an ecosystem initiative can be somewhat messy and it can take a while for the process to shake out, our ecosystem initiatives have had some amazing ripple effects over time. The Council's first ecosystem initiative on unfished forage fish inspired our scientists to include an ongoing focus on the forage base in the annual ecosystem status report. And that annual report, coupled with our second initiative on reviewing and refining the ecosystem status report, created a deeply educated council family and fishing public who engaged in the climate change scenario planning process of the third initiative. And now we're seeing that the council's work on the forage base inspired some amazing new science work led by the National Marine Fisheries Service's Southwest Fishery Science Center to modernize West Coast diet data into the California current trophic database. New publications from that work will start coming out soon, and who knows where that science will lead future initiatives and policy efforts. The Ecosystem Workgroup will be meeting on Monday, March 6th at the Council's meeting in South Seattle. The Council will be discussing ecosystem agenda items, both the Ecosystem Status Report and this Ecosystem Initiative on Tuesday, March 7th. Thank you so much for your time and attention.